Today on Joe's Geek Show, we're going to be looking at The Flash, issue number 768. What's going on and welcome to Joe's Geek Show, the video series where we talk comics. And if you're new and like to support the channel, you can do so by clicking that like button, hitting that subscribe button, and sharing. And with that, oh, well, <laughs> after the end of Joshua Williamson's run, and we got that endless winter storyline, and... Followed up with the unfortunate story that was Future State. We are finally back to the main Flash series, where this time Wally West is set to take over the mantle of the Flash in The Flash 768. And this book is written by Jeremy Adams with art by Brandon Peterson, Marco Santucci, and Dave LaFuente. Colors by Micah Tay, Arif Prianto, and Luis Guerrero, with letters by Steve Wands. And this book starts off with a recap of Wally's history from the time he got his powers to getting into the Mobius chair before we see the Justice League with a mix of emotions as Wally told them he's quitting being the Flash. Barry tries to talk to him, but Green Arrow says they should let him quit, bringing up Roy and the events of Heroes in Crisis. Wally then convinces Barry that this is the best thing for him, and it's decided the only way for this to work is to cut Wally off from the Speed Force, in which the two engage in a run so Barry can siphon Wally's powers. However, an anomaly occurs, and Wally turns to energy and disperses, leaving only his costume. Barry also quickly discovers that not only are his speed powers gone, but so are those of Max Mercury, Jay Garrick, and Wallace West. Meanwhile, Wally awakens to not only find himself in prehistoric times, but that he occupies the body of a caveman, yet still retains his speed powers. Unfortunately, as Wally comes to find out, a velociraptor also seems to have a connection to the speed force, resulting in a long chase when Barry manages to contact Wally, filling him in on his theory of what may have happened and the Velociraptor begins to vibrate until it explodes with energy. Due to the explosion, Barry loses connection with Wally and works to re-establish it, when Green Arrow says to Barry that they should forget about Wally because he's probably dead. Barry gets angry and tells Green Arrow that if it was Roy he was trying to save, he wouldn't hesitate to do all that he can. Green Arrow of course agrees, and we soon learn that Wally was propelled into a different time. But not just any, as he finds out that he's now in the body of Bart Allen, aka Impulse, before being told to run by Gold Beetle as Wally looks to see a large Dominator attacking. And I'd say it's fun. Not perfect, but fun. Sometimes. I mean, the story structure and setup was easy enough to follow. Wally doesn't want to be the Flash anymore, decides the best way to do that is to give up his power so he can just go be a dad and a husband. Which, of course, something had to go wrong with that, and give us the events of this book. Because I will say, the idea of Wally body hopping via the Speed Force is an interesting concept, and we also get some pretty fun, yet nonsensical elements. Like a Speed Force dinosaur, which actually gave me a bit of a laugh. And it is nice to see Wally smiling and kind of enjoying himself, especially when he's doing things like the Fred Flintstone off the back of a Brachiosaurus. It's a very odd situation he's in, but he makes the best of it. Because at the very least, when he gets back home, it'll be a cool story to tell. But the sort of fun whimsical nature of the sections are in stark contrast to Barry's side of the story, who's dealing with all of the things like trying to find out what Wally is, how to bring him home, and of course, dealing with Green Arrow, who now has a personal distaste for Wally. All because of what happened to Roy within the events of Heroes in Crisis and Green Arrow would personally be okay with seeing Wally either dead or lost to time. Which, I gotta admit, makes him come across really petty. Especially since Barry brings up the fact, you know, that Wally was sort of instrumental in saving the entire multiverse, or now omniverse, as we now have. And also for me personally, these scenes slow down the pace of the book, because as Wally's sections are fast-paced and action-oriented, Barry's is just science and talking and dialogue and yeah, I, I was kind of bored. Because realistically, I don't care what they're talking about. I mean, I get it. He's trying to find Wally, have these conversations with like Green Arrow and Mr. Terrific to think maybe okay something possibly happened to the Speed Force that set these whole chain of events off in the first place. But while this is all going on, I'm thinking, 
Wally, dinosaurs, speed velociraptors. Let's get back to that. And also, I would like to bring up that this book doesn't really feel like that much of a Wally Flash solo book and more of a Wally Berry dual protagonist book. Because that was one of the biggest selling points of coming back to read The Flash was that Wally was going to take over the mantle as The Flash and Barry was going to go do some work and uh, discover the Omniverse. Now, this could change in subsequent issues, but for now, I still can't really call this a Wally Flash book. And this is where the sometimes fun part comes in because when I'm reading Wally West, I'm actually enjoying myself. Again, when I'm reading Barry, I'm kind of bored. And to that effect, I can see what it was trying to do with this method to really establish just how different they are with the various tones, but can't help but feel like they missed the mark and the book would have benefited a little bit more from being a solo Wally adventure, where we get the entire book of following Wally in prehistoric times as he's left to his own devices for survival and really show us that he can thrive under pressure. Like maybe he finds a way to, you know, work out the whole body hopping thing and, you know, personally, I would end the story arc with him going back to his heroes in crisis body and just erasing that whole thing from existence. Also some positives that I can't give the book is that there were a lot of, you know, fun little interesting references. Like we already established the whole Fred Flintstone thing with him riding off the Brachiosaurus. Naturally, some Jurassic Park lingo's gotta come into it with Barry even asking Wally, where are you? And Wally's like, I feel like I'm in Jurassic Park times. And Barry's response was, the 90s? And even a callback to 1978 Superman with somebody using the line, Jim Bones, that's a bad outfit. Which I think in context would have made more sense in a Superman book. Now let's talk about the art. So this story was illustrated by three different artists and it shows because the art changes as the story progresses. And when it starts, I can't say I'm the biggest fan of this style because a lot of the characters, especially like with their faces and stuff, look kind of strange. As well as there were some creative choices on how certain characters responded to things. For example, after Wally tells Barry in the Justice League that he doesn't want to be the Flash anymore, Barry's got a look of anger and disgust on his face which for me, I don't think would have been the proper face to make as caring, compassionate, and understanding would be a little more up Barry Allen's, well, alley. Oddly enough, it was Batman who was given the look of like sadness and concern where I kind of feel like, yeah, that, that should have been on Barry's face. And you know, then you got Green Arrow, you know, just turning up his chin, looking like a smug little prick. Did I mention I kind of hate Green Arrow in this story? But there were still elements that I thought were pretty okay. Such as having Barry and Wally mirror each other to kind of illustrate their kinship as well as shared qualities. But there was also this weird outline with the characters that just never looked quite right. Cause I don't know if you remember those sort of like plastic stickers that you would get. They would, it would come with like a background and you could kind of just make little scenes and stuff like that and you could always like take the stickers off and put them back on in like a different sequence to make new scenes. Yeah, it was, it was, it was kind of like that. I would definitely say that the prehistoric scenes were easily my most favorite as they were the most aesthetically interesting as well as the cool action sequences that were associated with them. Plus this fun nod to Jurassic Park where the only thing missing from it was Wally saying, Clever girl. I also like how the art handled and illustrated the change in Wally's appearance as, of course, to us, he looks like Wally West, but whenever he looks in a mirror or any kind of reflection, he sees the person he's inhabiting. Wait a sec, this sounds really familiar. Oh my gosh, are we ripping off Wonder Woman 1984? In the end, the book was fun at times, but boring at times. It had good artwork at times, and not so good artwork at times. I think if the book had totally focused on Wally throughout, it would have been a much more rich and interesting experience because this book still doesn't feel like the full return of Wally West to the Flash mantle that we were promised by DC and feels more like DC just kind of dipping their toes in the water, just sort of 
waiting it out to gauge the reaction in case it's not what they hope it's gonna be, where they would then cast Wally to the side once again in favor of keeping Barry as the Flash. And if it does work out, they can go let Barry do the Omniverse thing while keeping Wally as the Flash on Earth. With that, I'm going to score The Flash, issue 768, a six out of 10. So The Flash, issue 768, what did you think about this book? If you've read it, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please leave your comments in the comment section below, as well as telling me why you think a dinosaur, speed force, velociraptor solo book would be a great idea. And if you liked this video, I'd love it if you'd smash that like button, share it with some friends, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and ring that notification bell for more comic book content. And if you're wondering what to watch next, consider one of these two videos. Alright, take care, have a great day, and as always, stay geeky.